What's up, it's Naz, and ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our top 10 games of 2017. And although this year was marred with controversies that took the video game world by storm, with everyone taking an introspective look at where exactly this industry is headed, 2017 remains one of the, if not greatest years in gaming, due to the amount of masterwork games that all came out this year. And as such, many games will unfortunately not be on our list by mere virtue of me having not played them yet. Or I frankly just think they're shit. The games on our list were chosen through entirely subjective means based on my personal taste, whether they resonated with me emotionally or from a game design level, and each have their own respective reasons for inclusion. With that said, here are our top 10 games of 2017. Number 10, Hive Swap Act 1. Once upon a time, Homestuck was a webcomic that dominated the quirkiest reaches of the internet, known for its unique humor, unpredictable writing, and memorable characters. Years after it ended, it was only a matter of time, almost too long actually, before the game-like nature of the comic was realized into an actual video game itself. Developed by What Pumpkin, Hive Swap, the first act of a series, is the embodiment of Andrew Hussey's Homestuck, translated to video game form. It follows the story of Joey Claire, a young girl that gets transported to an alien planet and trouble ensues. Taking cues from classic nostalgic point and clicks from the 90s, the game features vibrant characters and settings and an astounding amount of interactivity with objects that puts lesser point and clicks to shame. Every object that fills each scene has like over 10 different interactions, with each one its own well-written joke. The humor never ends as you're constantly bombarded with Homestuck's signature self-aware humor, echoing humor from Undertale, whose creator and maestro composer Toby Fox also composed the game's soundtrack as his music makes great work of engrossing the player deeply in the game's weird, weird world. Hive Swap is a simple point and click, but also an achievement in adapting a silly webcomic into a silly video game. Number 9. The Letter The games industry needs more great designers. Those that can rein in their imaginations like a painter that doesn't go wild with their strokes, but masterfully executes every single one with intent and purpose. Developed by Philippine devs Yang Yang Mobile, The Letter is a horror visual novel that is a triumph of successful, streamlined, and focused design. I began this year expressing my discontent at my own local video game industry, an industry whose clear focus was on the mobile game market, and those who've turned to develop actual full games were merely making discount clones of better executed ones. There was an underlying obsession with gameplay where most local developers would either play it so safe and just reskin proven mechanics for a familiar but uninnovative mass market product, or play it so to the multitude of features without the ability or budget to do so properly, leading to broken or discount experience. The Letter is a horror game as much as it is a visual novel, and while its story archetypally follows the lives of a group of friends all haunted by a mysterious and murderous entity, it's very self-aware of the common cliché and tropes that plague these genres. But it not only embraces them for what they're worth, but also deconstructs them and recreates something fresh and new with their undead corpses. With incredibly complex characters unheard of in horror genre protagonists, coupled with writing and pacing that oozes tension and dread, topped off with a uniquely done QTE system that exponentially increases the anxiety and fear at all the right horror moments, brings together a holistic horror and visual novel experience. The letter made me believe in my local industry and the potential talented developers with a focused vision and guts to take risks from doing the norm and what's profitable to rise above as the cream of the crop. Yes, Ashton is still worst character, would replay to see him die again. Number 8. Little Nightmares The nightmares we've all had as children. Of fearing the unknowns in the dark, the monsters that live under our beds or in our closets, those that eagerly await for us to go to sleep so that they could come out and devour us, have all been realized in Little Nightmares. Developed by Tarshir Studios, Little Nightmares brings all of our childhood nightmares to life in the most morbid, skin-crawling, yet nostalgic way. 
Tapping into the fears of our childhood psyche as we explore a decrepit ship as a little girl six, the game oozes with gross atmosphere, successfully being unnerving even when all one sees are just the shadows in the dark. Aside from six and all the other ravenous denizens of the Maw, the main character of the game that lends so much to it is darkness itself, as it is what plays with our fears with whatever it's hiding in its shadow. The eerie mumbles and groans of things moving in the dark, the silhouettes you swear you saw moving for a second, until they finally reveal themselves to be which may not be very kind to scared little girls. Which then leads to frantic and horrifying chases away from things unafraid to leave the closet and into the claustrophobic hallways that are our escape. Little Nightmares takes what we fear the most as a child, distorts it, and reimagines it with a twist of Japanese fantasy, echoing stories of old where little children are spirited away into terrifying realms of horror never to be seen again. Fuck you, Jerry Janter. Fuck you. Number 7. Ruiner There are two themes I love the most in media, Lovecraft and Cyberpunk. The city is dark with crime yet bright with neon, and someone took your brother, but all you have is this voice in your head and a metal bat for anyone that gets in your way. Developed by Raycon Games, Ruiner is a bloody fantastic cyberpunk themed twin stick shooter as it is bloody. Incredibly challenging and incredibly engaging, Ruiner gives players complete and utter control of how they choose to dispatch Rancock City's most vile and most despicable. With astounding weapon and skill variety, players are free to switch around on the fly and experiment through failure. Miserable fucking failure until they find out what puts the most bullets in the enemy's skulls most efficiently. Its instant respawn system provides no downtime after deaths and immediately puts the players back into the flow of the game, leading to immersing possibly hour-long runs of figuring bosses and encounters out. Coupled by an orgasmic design aesthetic and soundtrack akin to classic cyberpunk like Ghost in the Shell, Ruiner is an explosive sensory experience of lights, sounds, and gunplay, as each level has its own character and feel that serves to immerse the player even more in the game's dystopian world. It's fucking Mimi, but Ruiner is unironically the dark souls of twin stick shooters. Get him, puppy! Number 6. Cuphead. You have a debt with the devil. What's a little cup to do? Developed by Studio MDHR, Cuphead is a masterpiece of art, music, and challenging game design. The game everyone thought would never come out finally came out and enveloped the world in its cartoony hellfire and magnificent jazz. The game is a monumental success in game design as it is holistically a near-perfect game, executing everything it set out to do in the classiest way possible. Everything about the game screams perfection, from the controlled chaos that is the jazz soundtrack, to the elaborate hand-drawn 1930s animation and art style, to the minute precision required of players to beat the game. All of this culminates in one of the most engaging video game experiences of the era, as it sets the bar higher for indies than any other game before. The only reason Cuphead isn't our number one game of the year is because this list is skewed more towards the amount of personal impact each game had on me. But if it were all about game design, Cuphead reigns supreme as one of the best games ever made. Number 5. Night in the Woods The game that started it all for us on our channel, a game of whimsy animal characters, the realities of life, and how we choose to go about living in our own little ways. Developed by Alec Halauka in Infinite Fall, Night in the Woods is a quirky millennial simulator, an adventure game that explores what it means to grow up. It's a game about waking up, looking in the mirror, and not recognizing who's looking back. It's a game about not being able to tell your parents what's troubling you, because even you don't know. It's a game about hanging with friends, playing in the garage band, getting wasted, doing silly crimes, listening to poetry, looking at the stars, and looking into ourselves. Night in the Woods is a game about acknowledgement. It doesn't ask us to simply accept things for how they are, or romanticize them into things they're not. It merely acknowledges them, and affirms that they do indeed exist. And that's one of the most powerful things a game can say to a young adult growing up, especially in the 2000s. Night in the Woods is a game you'd treat like an old friend. 
Someone that could just come over for a slice of pizza, lie on the bed and literally just stare at the ceiling with, because they're there, and the presence and acknowledgement is more than enough. Number 4. Rockwen. What do we wish for before we die? Happiness? Understanding? Acceptance? Kindness? Developed and composed by Laura Shigihara, Rockwin is a heart-wrenching game about the finality of life and how even in our final moments, we can still touch the lives of others. Kindness is powerful. The kindness we give to strangers, the kindness we give to friends, the kindness we give to our own mothers. And this game embodies kindness. Rockwin is a story of wishes. Wishes to be with friends. Wishes to be with loved ones. Wishes to be with our pets. Wishes to be with family. Tragedy is something no one can fully escape. It's a part of life. But how we choose to live on and touch the lives of others is what defines us in the end. Life on Earth is finite, and kindness goes a long way in making someone else's life more worth it. Along with To The Moon, Rockwin stands beside it as not only one of my favorite RPG Maker games of all time, but one of my all-time favorite story games that I have ever played in my life. Beautifully written, beautifully composed, and overwhelmingly touching, I wish for more games like it. Number 3, Pyre. I'll never forget these characters. I'll never forget these friends I've made. Developed by Supergiant Games, Pyre is an adventure like no other, where the characters one meets become friends for life. A letter to my dear Nightwings. Long ago, we fell into the downside, near death and frail, until we were saved by some travelers. Friends. We met more friends along the way. Cute imps, weird girls, creepy grannies, and others like us. Others that yearn for freedom. Others that yearn for power. Others that yearn for revolution. Pyre was a game about revolution. About ideals. About how we could challenge to change the world. There were hard choices to make. They had to be made. Not everyone could go back. We got cocky and lost some chances for some of us. We despaired at the thought that everything might not be enough in the end. But we pressed on. We persevered. Because we were the Nightwings. And I was your reader. We succeeded in the end. Many of our friends made it back to the other side, but I chose to be left behind because that's what friends are for. I hope you're all doing okay. I've had a great year of gaming, but I'll never forget any one of you. For the Nightwings. For now and always. Number 2. Divinity Original Sin 2 Magic is outlawed in Rivalon, and you're a sorcerer destined to become a new god. What could go wrong? Developed by Larian Studios, Divinity Original Sin 2 is a game so freeing and so full of choice that it stands us one of the best RPGs ever made. With a vast and malleable world like no other, Every choice players make has a tangible effect on the landscape, its people, and other players. DOS 2 is a game defined by choice more than any other, with its massively complex branching tree of plot threads, coupled with its engaging turn-based battle system, wherein players can literally do anything and everything to turn the tide of battle, makes for one of the most compelling RPGs of the decade. 
Every character one meets, every quest one starts and finishes, every object one interacts with is so fully fleshed out that Larian Studios have so seemingly succeeded in creating a living, breathing RPG world where choices and everything matters as a consequence. Along with its Game Master mode that allows players to create their own D&D-S campaigns, the OS 2 proves to be as engaging as it is in its campaign, as well as a medium of creativity and freedom. Divinity Original Sin 2 succeeds in making players feel like gods, with overwhelming control over their choices and what happens over the world of Rivalon. Honorable Mention Warframe Years will pass, games will come and go, but Warframe will live on, constantly evolving. Developed by Digital Extremes, Warframe this year has proved that it stood the test of time, and not only adapted, but also evolved along with the ever-changing gaming landscape. This year, we saw the release of the Plains of Eidolon, the monumental and groundbreaking update the game had, but a mere glimpse at the years-long innovation that the game has taken since its release as a small game back in 2013. Remaining one of the most top-played games on Steam for so many years and constantly trying to outdo itself with time, Warframe has proven to be a timeless product that exemplifies the dedication Digital Streams has with their baby. And with that said, of all the games we've had in 2017, here is our number one game of the year. Number one, what remains of Edith Finch? What is family? Who are they in our lives and what can we learn from those who have come before us? Developed by Giant Sparrow, What Remains of Edith Finch is one of the pinnacles of gaming, where gameplay and narrative meet harmoniously to produce an experience that showcases the peak of what the gaming medium can offer. Not an overt focus on game mechanics, nor the narrative, but what both can do together to deliver a connected and thought-provoking interactive experience that no film, book, painting, or any other medium can offer. Told in a series of anthology stories revolving around the enigmatic disappearance of the Finch family, What Remains of Edith Finch takes gaming a step forward by melding the story to the actions we do as a player, transporting us to whimsical and tragic stories of life and loss. Experiencing them for ourselves in the same way we kinetically interact with our keyboard and mouse. It's so hard to explain games like these. Games like Brothers A Tale of Two Sons, Undertale, and What Remains of Edith Finch, because what they do is precisely take advantage of what the gaming medium can deliver, experiences that can't be replicated anywhere else, that even VR has failed to emulate up to this point. And suffice to say, What Remains of Edith Finch is more than just a game, more than just a story. It's an experience like no other, and very few games like these will ever bless us in our lifetime. And that's why What Remains of Edith Finch is our number one game of 2017. Many will say that gaming took a huge step back this year, due to greedy developers and publishers pushing the envelope of what is an acceptable video game. Countries and organizations banding together to once again shine a dark light on this industry that we love so much as gamers. But as Killup said in his own year-end video, the night is always darkest before the dawn. And what we've received this year? All these games that have broke the mold and created new and innovative experiences are just the beginning. We can't let greedy AAA companies sour the taste of this year because it was truly and honestly one of the best years in gaming since its inception. AAA aren't the only ones making games. There are numerous talented indies out there creating games like those we've seen on our list that deserve so much more of our support and money as consumers. Speak not only with our outrage, but also most importantly with our wallets. 
the more we keep buying into and paying companies that care more about our money than our experience, the more predatory business practices will be normalized and accepted. 2017 showed us where rock bottom was. We've seen companies scratch the surface of what is insultingly possible with games. But we have also seen all these great games that signify that there is only one way left, and that is up. It's been a great year gaming with all of you guys on our channel, and I wouldn't trade it for anything else. Happy holidays everyone, and see you all in 2018. My name is Nez, and thanks for watching. What are your top games of 2017? Comment them down below, and if you enjoyed our video, give it a like, share it so we could grow our channel together, and most importantly, support the game companies that create experiences for us like no other, and put the games first above all else. See you all next time.